Good morning, church family. Good to be here with you this morning. Great to see everybody this morning. What a great way to start off this morning, sir. Uh, this is what we have with us, George Walker. George, you come on out. And uh, what a privilege it is to have out there this morning. We've been praying for her. George, you have no idea how much I've been praying for you. How many people here have praying for you? And, uh, yeah. and so, Georgia, I know it's a little nerve wracking, but these people are here for you. And they're excited for you, just like I am. Go and focus. She's unashamed of Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. And uh, so, Georgia, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, you have. So, Georgia, come on, your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'll baptize you in obedience. Jesus, you may be my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in the baptism, and risen to all in the newness of life. Thank you so much. You may turn this way again. And uh, thank you, Robin, and uh, God bless you, dear. And again, we're just so appreciative of you being here. We're going to enjoy our worship today. And so as we do, David, you come on. Now, I have to remember, uh, let me just say this. Uh, I'm still the new kid on the block, all right? So you have to understand that. But I have my offering envelope, and I don't want to go home with it. So we have a basket. Isn't that right, Mr. Allen? Our church treasurer, where is he? Uh, he's guarding the basket. There he is. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a basket over here uh, that if you uh, have an offering or tithe that you want to uh, leave this morning, please do so. You put it in that basket, or you can certainly find him. We're just so appreciative. We're going to continue. David, come on and let's do some singing. Appreciate you, man. Come on. Good morning, everyone. Please stand and join us as we lift up our voices to our Father.
handsome, cute young man. Could I just look at could, could, could I just love you? Yes, I could. Yes, I could. I can't help. I have a way of the children. The boys smile at me, the girls hug me. Look out here. <laughs> I could just see. This, now, this is Archie Long. Look at that smile. I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I, I, do you think Mama and Daddy would rent you for uh, maybe a couple of hours? <laughs> Isn't, isn't he a beautiful baby? Beautiful. Yes. And our mom and daddy right here, they're not going to leave it. And this is Brooke uh, and Jordan Long. And these are the parents. Come on, big kids. Come on. Look at this. I said, kids, when you, when you get my age, and, and I mean, oh my goodness. It, yes, okay. Now, uh, he, he, I'm not going to shake him. Is his tummy full? <laughs> I'm going to be real kind and still to you, Jordan. But God has gifted you and he's blessed you with a child. This is God's gift to you both. And he is... Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, he's, listen, he's going to be all boy. I'm here to tell you. But it's a gift. And God expects you to nurture this gift. And to love this gift. And teach him in the things of God. May he grow up in the statues. In the ways of Jesus. And Archie, we dedicate you right now, honey. We dedicate you to the glory of God. I'm going to ask the congregation to please stand. If you're able. And you're standing. You're okay so far, mommy. Your standing is saying to this family. We love you, we will support you, we want to nurture Archie as he grows up in our congregation. He will be part of us and we will be part of him. If you will make that covenant with me now, would you please say, I will. I will. Archie, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, that's, that's okay. That, that was them saying, they're going to they're gonna love on you and you're going to be part of them and they're part of you, okay? We're going to pray right now. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Loving Father, for this beautiful baby, we offer him back to you. Your gift to Jordan and Brooke. Now, Lord, we give him to you. Use them as parents to nurture this little boy. And may in the years to come, he come to know you as Lord and Savior. Because he sees in mom and daddy the love of God. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And I'm going to give you this pretty little baby back. I've got, I've got a, a certificate. Oh, I know you don't want to leave me, but this is, uh, this is a uh, certificate. I've got a couple of copies for it. And it just says, Dedication. We, Jordan Scott and Brooke Poole Long, commit ourselves to the Christian nurture of Archie Bennett Long, Entering into this commitment at El Bethel Baptist Church as part of the congregational worship on September the 13th, 2020. And then there is a place, I have signed that, but there's a place for the two of you to sign. And I hope you'll keep that in this baby book. Do you have a baby book? <laughs> Grandma, where are the grandparents and great-grandparents of Archie? Stand up, stand up. If, if you're able, grandparents, great-grandparents. Aunts and uncles, you. stand up, look at them. <laughs> Woo! There's one behind you. Um, I promise I'll never say anything bad about your family, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you're, all connected, you're all connected. But God bless you as you nurture and he nurtures. Thank you. You may be seated. Here you go, folks. This is yours. And thank you, God. Let's give them a hand. Thank you very much. Rowan, where are you? Come on up here. Before Rylan comes, he's going to leave our scripture. Rylan, I got something for you. I'm going to tell you something. This young man, he's been part of our church family now for how long have you been with us, there, buddy? A little over three years. He is, uh, he's, this is your last Sunday with us, I think, right? And, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't have the joy of working with him, but I know that uh, you love people and they love you.
and they invested in you and you invested in them. From your church family, we love you. Just a card and a gift of thanks to you. You will be missed. You are loved. And your precious children and your dear wife loved. And know that as God continues to use you, that you go with our love and our blessings and our prayers. And you just keep on keeping on for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't anything you want to say, and then you can leave us in our scripture and our prayer time, sir. Amen. Thank God, little John. I just want to echo that. Uh, I just want to echo that this morning, church. It's been a blessing to be here a little over three years. And uh, from the love that I've gave that you give to me, and from the love that I've been able to give from you, what a blessing it is. And I truly appreciate all the times that we've had together. We've had a lot of great times. And I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to continuing to see what God's going to do here at El Bethel. Uh, the mission continues. That's the wonderful thing. Whether preachers come or preachers go, you pastors come and go, God's uh, mission still remains the same. That's to glorify and honor Him. So looking forward to see in a few years what El Bethel will do. Uh, so looking forward to that. This morning, uh, we do have a couple of announcements. Uh, the, the one thing I want to focus in on is uh, I want to go ahead and, and call Georgia up to the, to the podium real fast. It's been a blessing to get to know her and her family. I had the privilege to baptize Owen, her older brother as well, uh, not too long ago. And uh, for them just to be in the youth group and get to know them and see them grow. It's, it's crazy. Uh, no one Georgia that she was in a while. And there's a lot of people, not just me, that, that uh, poured their lives into Georgia. Miss Tina is here this morning, and uh, I know she had a great influence on Georgia and that entire family. Uh, so, Georgia, is there anything that you want to say? You good? <laughs> but uh, we do want to we do want to give you a certificate of baptism, and this is something that you can you can frame, you can hang up, you can do whatever you want with it. But just certifies that on this day, the 13th of September, that you were baptized. And you took that leap of faith. And uh, it's a big step for a lot of people. She was saved, what, six months ago? It was, it's been a while. So she kind of had to build the courage to get baptized. And we're so glad that you did that. You followed through with that obedience. So uh, Dr. Little John has signed this. I want to present that to you. As well as, there's, there's nothing better that I can give her that I hope will help you grow in your walk of faith. Want to present you with this Bible as well. Absolutely. And uh, Anna wrote you a, a letter in there, and I signed it with you a little something. So, and of course, if you ever, hey, just, you know, you have a number, call me, here for you. Love you. Can I get one more hug? All right. Are you dead? Proud of you. You just push it out there. <laughs> and Adam, too, I want to read uh, from Matthew 10, chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. And it says here, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. And so that's just to add to uh, of Georgia saying that she's unashamed. She said, Rob, I'm unashamed of you, and I want everybody to know it. So Georgia and everybody else who's been baptized and who called Jesus their person, Lord, and Savior, uh, we need to live life like we're unashamed of him. Uh, when we go out into the world, it's easy to, to love Jesus when we're here in church. But uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about Georgia and Owen and uh, Emily, Kate, and Destiny, and Owen, and all the other youth that's here of how they're sharing Jesus in their schools and how they're just completely unashamed. I'm ready to see and hear that and see that revolution start because it can start with just one person. And so, uh, of course, y'all, hey, I'm here for you always. Love y'all. Thank you for letting me be a part of your lives. And um, Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you this morning, Father, and we just thank you, God, for all your goodness, God, for loving us, God, for guiding us, Father, for promising us, God, that just as Jesus was, was buried, and, uh, but he didn't remain here, and he rose from the grave, God, that we too one day believe in you will be raised as well and have eternal life in you. God, we just thank you for that promise. God, we thank you that you're always by our side, God, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. Though we may fail you many times, God, you continue to love us and forgive us when we come to you and forgive us and ask for that. And God, I do pray for El Bethel Baptist Church this morning, God. I pray, Father, that they will continue to be a church that seeks your, after your own heart, God. Let us be a church that continues to pour into their community, God, and just 
just love, love you, and love others. That is what you us to do. And we have the privilege to do that. Come now, even during this service, Father, and just open our hearts. Now that we may know you more, we may love you more than we do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us.
God's people say it. In our service of worship each week, there will be a time that we have a pastoral prayer. And it's the time that your pastor comes and prays for you and prays with you. And praise for the church. And praise, as Ryan has so beautifully said, God's blessings would still fall fresh. And then we would be the blessing to those outside the walls of this edifice. So right now, I'm going to invite you to pray. And you can certainly pray. You know, you'll find, uh, for me, that I enjoy praying in various and sundry ways. There'll be times that I like to come and I may just kneel right here to pull. How do that? I may stand. I may kneel at a chair. I may do as the Jews, even to this very day, if you've been to a Jewish synagogue, Orthodox. They pray. They simply just stand and they lift their hands and their hands, their palms. The Jews, when they pray, their palms are always outstretched to say, Lord, I have nothing but you. And they pray, stand. sometimes my prayer will be offered in that form. It doesn't really matter if you're sitting or if you're standing, if you're kneeling, if you're bowed. But we're going to find this, our time of morning prayer. And so I'm going to invite you right now, however you wish, to join with me as we go to the Lord. Would you bow your hands? Loving Father, we're your bride. This is your church house. And we've gathered because we love you and we desire to worship you. We've come from many different walks of life. Some have entered this building with heavy burdens. Hearts that have been broken this week. Folks who are facing financial challenges like never before. Others have come here joyfully. You've answered their prayer this week. A loved one's been saved. Someone has given up that habit of drinking or drugs. There's victory in Jesus in the hearts of many today. But every single heart, beginning with this pastor, a need for you. To know that you're near. To know indeed that your words when you said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Telling me that I would never be an orphan. That I would always have a father. And I know his name is Jesus. I mean, Father, before you we come. Asking you to bless our church. Asking you to lead us and guide us in these coming months. We've begun a new day here. And Father, I pray that everything we do here is bathed in prayer. And we look to you. We're here to please you and you alone. So my new Father, as sinful as we all are, as fallible as we all are. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for me and all of our church family this morning. Hear our prayer. Know our prayer. Know our hearts. And we make this prayer in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Amen. As we said to you today, this is a wonderful day, and the fact that we set aside a young man as deacon. Before Jordan comes, he's going to share his testimony with us. I am going to ask his sweet wife, Brooke, in just a moment. Uh, I'm not gonna, Brooke, I'm going to come down to you rather than you coming up to me. But I am going to ask you to stand right down here, please, Brooke, if you would. And 
I'm going to ask you to come right over here. Because see, when we set aside the deacon, oftentimes we forget to see the infants that's here in God's word. Let me read to you the qualifications of deacon. All right, now listen carefully. Here in First Timothy chapter three, this is a faithful saying: If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome. Nor covetous. One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission of all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he be able to take care of the church of God? Not a novice, that's being puffed up with pride. He falls into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, deacons. Right, that word likewise is a powerful word in Greek. You know what that word means? That word likewise means everything that I have just read is included in what I'm going to continue to read, okay? Brooke, we're getting close to what's important here concerning the wife. Likewise, everything I've said up to now, deacons must be reverent, not double tongue, not given too much wine, not greedy for money. Hosting the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested. Then let them serve as deacons being found blameless. Now listen to verse 11. And Brooke, this is the challenge from God's word to you. This is what God's word is saying to you. Likewise, the wives must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate. Faithful in all things. You see, this is the challenge to you, Brooke. Will you, as the wife of a deacon, will you do your very best to accept and stand firm upon the teachings of God's holy word? I'm going to ask you now if you would to bow your heads, and I'm just going to lay my hands upon you, dear. Now, Lord Jesus, we set aside this wife. May she always be faithful to you, to her family, to her church. I pray the blessing of God be upon her. As she embarks side by side with her husband to fulfill his role of being called and set aside as a deacon. Bless them both, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Brooke. You may be seated. Jordan, come on up here with me to the pulpit, if you would. I, you know what I did? I asked Jordan, I said, I want you to come up here and share a testimony. And uh, so, folks, let's uh, make sure his mic, is, the pulpit mic is on. And uh, I want you just to share your heart, my dear friend, before I bring a brief charge and we come for the laying on hands. Good morning, Al Bethel. Good morning, family. So excited to be here this morning. God has just been so good. And uh, as I was sitting there thinking over what I was going to say this morning, I realized there's three consistent things in my life. It's been the Lord, my family, and then Bethel Baptist Church. And every good thing has come from those three things. Three things. And uh, I've been a part of this church my whole life. Uh, it's been my mother's womb. I've come to this church. It's just been an honor to grow up in this church and to serve for many of you. Y'all have mentored me. Y'all have taught me the word. Y'all have taught me what it means to be in the Lord and how to grasp my relationship with the Lord, how to reach others. And uh, I was, I went to um, Calvary Baptist School when I was saved. I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ministry's here. I knew about the Lord. Through El Bethlehem, through various things in, in, in this uh, Calvary Christian school as well. And uh, my teacher led me to the Lord that morning. Her name was Miss Penny. And she led me to the Lord when I was five years old. And uh, two nights later, Greg Sweet was the pastor here. He came into my room. 
on and off. Sharon Drive, and come up in my room and make sure that I understood what it meant to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And ever since then, uh, I have been following him, and he has grown me into the man I've become today, and I've just been so blessed. And I just remember growing up, that my parents would sing hymns to me, and in the morning, my dad would come get me during school wherever we were going. He would get me up and he'd already be, he'd already be happy and he'd be singing something from his gospel group or New River that morning that we're working on and it's just a joy. I woke up every morning knowing the Lord loved me through my parents and through my family. That's what it started. And, uh, you know, as, as I got older, about teenage age, 11, 12 years old, one of the biggest trials of my life at a young age was facing uh, unexpected surgery for my brother Dylan. He was my best friend. He was my buddy. And, uh, he had to have open heart surgery. And uh, I could just tell at that time my parents were very uncertain what was going to happen. First time in my life that I could realize that my parents had some uncertainty. And uh, Dylan had to have open heart surgery. I, and I didn't understand what was going on. But the Lord had us, this congregation prayed over us, and he could play basketball, he could do anything he wanted to, come uh, months after that Sunday, he just blessed us so many ways. And going up to this church, y'all sent me on mission trips, y'all prayed for me, y'all called me, y'all even prayed for me, so many times, through trials that I've been through, and uh, now that I'm married, five years we've been married, he's blessed us with three beautiful children. Y'all have supported me. We got to dedicate our children this morning. Mike was dedicated in this church. My father was dedicated in this church. It's just been a consistent thing in my life. And I just want to thank each one of you for supporting me and what I do in the Lord. I, it's got one long on my bulletin this morning. But I want this to be about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done in my life. Because he's fostered me in so many ways. And I'm not, I'm not worthy of it. But he loves me anyway. And if you don't know Lord Jesus Christ this morning, I pray that he tugs on your heart. That you come to know him. That's my prayer to everyone this morning. If you do know him, please become closer in your walk. And just thank you for having, again, supporting me. I know we cut what you said. But again, Three consistent things in my life have been Lord Jesus Christ, my family, and this church. And I pray for y'all as well as y'all pray for me as we, as I help make decisions and, and believe that y'all pray for me and pray for El Bethel right now. That, that we make decisions that prosper the gospel. That he uses El Bethel Baptist Church to, to knock on doors, to spread the gospel that he, he's given us and uh, I'll pray for you guys, and y'all pray for me. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to close with a prayer, and I'll be back. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to pray for each individual person here this morning, Lord. I don't know where they are in their walk with you, or they know you, Lord, but you, you know. You know, and uh, I just pray a special blessing over them as they live their daily lives, as they face sin, as they face temptation, that you will be with them to face whatever they're facing in life. And I just want to humbly thank you for what you've done in my life, Lord, and that I can give that and share it with other people. And uh, just thank you for uh, my family, Lord, how they've mentored me in so many ways. And I want to thank you for this church, Lord. Everybody in this church has had a hand in me, uh, uh, just being ministered to, Lord. Just thank you for them. And please continue to bless them in this church. And just thank you for your grace and mercy and your bloodshed to, to save me, Lord, and to share that with other people. I pray again for everyone in this room this morning, and uh, thank you for what you do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Doesn't that bless your heart to know that we have men like Jordan on our deacon body? who watch over this 
wonderful fellowship. He joined uh, four other dear men today, and I was so honored to be in my first season. Was this your first one or second? Second, all right. And uh, he's already been elected secretary, and uh, so many other things. God bless you, boy. I tell you what, what a joy. And you know, I hope and pray that as he has shared this with you, that those of you who are members here at Bethel, uh, you have you've been part of him. Look at you want to know what you're doing in the Lord's kingdom? Look, look. And how many others have there been? I think it's glorious, and I think it's wonderful, and we commend you. And it's our prayer that God's going to reach the reach that bless you. You know, I had just a very brief message this morning, very brief. And it's taken from over there in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I've entitled it, But You, O Man of God. If you have your Bibles, we're going to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to read two verses, verses 11 and 12. If you're able, let's stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word, please. Please. If you're able. This message is for everyone, yes, but it's also for Jordan and Brooke. Listen to Paul's writing to Timothy. But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. May God bless to us the reading of his holy, inspired, error-free word. Would you bow your heads as we Loving Father, in these brief moments, I pray that we will sense once again your continued moving spirit. Speak through us through these words as I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You, you may be seated. There are several things that you can find in a name. You will meet many people who are addressed as a gentleman, but they're not really gentle. You will find ladies being introduced or being told that this individual is very ladylike and they're really not real ladylike. You will find many people who will be introduced as reverend so-and-so, but the fact of the matter is they're not real reverend. And yet the Apostle Paul does something nowhere else you're going to find here in the New Testament. This title uh, that was given uh, here, uh, Son of excuse me, uh, man of God. That title is an Old Testament usage. The prophets of old were called men of God. And only here does Paul address Timothy. And he calls him a man of God. He doesn't call him a man of the world. He doesn't call him a man of flesh. He simply calls him a man of God. The greatest title that could ever be bestowed upon an individual, the Apostle Paul uses it one time, and he uses it for young Timothy, the pastor. Rise up, old man of God. And you know what's fascinating? Did you read that? Did you see this over here in God's Word? Verse 11, he says, But you, old man of God, look what he tells you to do. Flee these things. What things? Oh, you know, you're going to see those things. We're not going to read them this morning, but they're in verses 3 through 10. Those are the things that Paul's talking about. They were dealing with false teachers. And, and what Paul is saying to you, you be a man of God. You do not let people come in here. You understand? You be that man of God and start teaching aberrant doctrine. Don't you let people come in here with another gospel. Don't you let people come in here with another Jesus being taught. You preach God's word. You stand tall on this inerrant scripture of his. And he says, 
you leave. And that's what he's telling us over here. Uh, if anyone teaches otherwise and doesn't consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then he tells us there in verse 4 and following what type of person they are. So he says, man of God, you flee these things. Flee them. He says something else to us over here. He says in verse 11, flee these things. And then he uses the word King James, I think, uh, translates it follow. New King James translates it pursue. You see it on the screen there. But you, old man of God, number one, you're going to flee. Number two, you're going to follow. And what are you going to follow, man of God? You're going to follow, look, here it is. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. That is what, that is your mandate. From the, from the Apostle Paul. I'm a little hot up here. Can you cut me down just a little bit, please? Your mandate. That's it, Jordan. To be gentle. To be kind. Righteous. You see it right there? That's what God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, is saying to all deacons who serve. He's saying that to all of God's children. He's saying it to me as much as he says it to you. He says you follow these things. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Alright, that's what you're going to do. You're going to, first of all, what? You're going to flee from these things that these folks who want to come in and, and have a, a second opinion. Listen, we believe this, we believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father except by Him. Period. There is no other way. Don't think there is. Don't you try coming in here saying there is, because you are wrong. Jesus is the only way, and you're going to see to it, and the deacon's going to see to it, and every born again believer in here is not going to let any church, our church. Be divided by worries, particularly of the world. And then he says the third thing, as I wrap up. Verse 12. You're going to flee. You're going to follow. And then look, you're going to fight. You're going to fight. The, the good faith. The good fight of faith. You're going to do that. With gentleness. Kindness. Patience. And if there's ever been a day that Christian people need to stand up and fight, it is now. I'm here to tell you, there's too much going on in this world. And I'm telling you, there's too much of the world trying to get in our churches. And we're just sitting there saying, well, okay. No, we're not going to sit there and say, okay. We're not, we're not going to be quiet. We're not going to be quiet in God's house. We're not going to be quiet outside. Don't come to me telling me your religion is personal. I don't care about your religion. What I care about is, do you know Jesus? He's not a religion. He's a relationship. And that's what we're all about. So as men of God, as women of God, we're told to flee from the things of the world. We're told to follow the things of God. And we're told to fight the good fight for the things that lay up in eternity. That's what it's all about. Rise up, old man of God. Jordan Long, you've been set aside by your church family here to be a man of God. Not a perfect man, no way can that ever be, but to simply be a man of God. And know how blessed you are. You've already affirmed that. you said it about your family. you said it about your church. But more than anything, you said it about the Lord. And now you've got a beautiful helpmate. You've got a, a beautiful child we dedicated to you. You're so blessed. And I encourage you with the love of Jesus in your heart. Rise up. Now, this morning, we're going to... Mark, would you come out, please? Let's just bring that chair up here, please. What we do, if, if you're a guest today and uh, you're not a... Uh, uh, you've never been part of a deacon ordination, this, there is nothing here mysterious. Okay? There's nothing here that's going on that is mysterious in any way, shape, form, or fashion. There's nothing secretive. Thank you, sir. 
There's nothing secretive about what we're doing. We're following the biblical mandate of setting a young man aside to serve as a deacon. That's what we're doing. And so what I'm going to do, Jordan, I'm going to ask you if you can to kneel right here. Real come here, if you would, please. I'm going to ask you to stand behind this chair. And I'm going to ask all of, uh, if there are ordained clergy, if you would come, if there are any ordained clergy, come right over here. And then I would ask if there are ordained deacons, if you would come and stand right here, please. Come on. If you would, we're going to make a line right here. And I'm going to ask you to come and lay hands on uh, Vic. Could you lift some music, please, while we're doing And I'm going to ask you to come and stay here. You as a congregation to sit quietly, prayerfully, we'll begin. If you go.
God you come. Such a healthy thing for the church when you're able to set aside one that has been called into the ministry and recognized for it. You know, we come to the close of our service, and when we do, we like to have a hymn of commitment. It can be called a hymn of invitation, but we call it a hymn of commitment. And maybe if you're here, you've never asked Jesus into your heart, we would like you to do that this morning. Maybe you'd like to be part of our fellowship. We'd like you to do that this morning. Maybe there's a word of rededication. You'd share it privately. You'd share it publicly. But whatever you would like to do and however you would like to respond to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we invite you to do so. David, you come lead us. Let's stand as we sing this hymn of commitment. I'm going to be here at the front to greet you if there's a decision to be made. Christmas nephew, my brother in Christ, and now a brother deacon. Amen. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, El Bethel has a long history of electing some really fine men for deacons. And here today, I, it's not just my nephew, it's a brother in Christ, and uh, a man who has proven worthy. And here's what the, here's what the uh, certificate of ordination says. Jordan Scott Long, having been chosen by this church of one good report, full of the spirit and of wisdom and capable of using the office well was set apart publicly to the office and work of deacon. Congratulations, George, and I really look forward to serving with you. All right.
I want you to have a great day. Now, for those of you who are clock watchers, it is now 11 o'clock. <laughs> we started at 10 o'clock, so don't you dare leave here saying that's the longest we did preach or I've ever been around. <laughs> You're going to beat every Methodist, Presbyterian, and Greer to Popeye, so drive carefully as you go, or wherever it is you might go. Two of my dear friends, Rick and Kathy Mays, are over here to my left. They're members of that Black Baptist Church. They're two of my dear, dear friends. Rick is a prayer minister there at Appalachian Baptist Church. They also have been missionaries with me to the islands, and they'll be going back again, as well as some of you will be going with me again. Well, not again for the first time, and I'll look forward to that, all right? Again, we're so glad to see all of you. Before, before I pronounce the benediction, now listen to me carefully. I know you're all truthful people, aren't you? I want you to turn around to somebody, shake their hand, and say, I hope I'll see you next Sunday. Would you do that right now? I hope I see you next Sunday. <laughs> okay. Now that means that means that we're gonna look forward to seeing all of you back here next Sunday, okay? Because uh, we wouldn't have asked that of you. I'm going to be here myself. I want you to have a great, great week. And you know what we're going to do? Now listen carefully. At the uh, end of the month, Vicky's retiring. Bless your heart. Served us so faithfully here. We're going to be having a luncheon right after the last Sunday. Uh, I think it is, right? The day you're pregnant on that? 27th. And so we're going to be recognizing Vicky for her service to the Lord. And while she's retiring and she will be missed. But now let me also remind you of this. We have... We'll be letting you know when Sunday school will be starting. Not yet. Deacons are meeting. We're going to go on a month-to-month -month basis. We're all anxious, but we want to do it properly and safely. I know that you understand that. Secondly, we'll tell you this, that at the end of October, we've got a family. we got fall festival, and we want all of you here. All of you here. And then I will remind you on October the 2nd. That's going to be a great day in downtown Greer. You know why? Because the Little River Band, New, New River. River, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there is a Little River Band, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I, am I showing my age or not? <laughs> um, am I showing my age? I guess New River. The, they picked the mandolin. There, do you, what do you play? Guitar? Banjo. He picks that thing. And he is a great picker. Uh, an American picker. And uh, anyways, okay. But that's going to be downtown here. Then we'll be leaving that loop. And I'm, we just want to tell you that so everybody will be there, okay? That will not be, that doesn't mean you can't be in church the next day. Now, have a great day. I love you so. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the privilege of allowing me to stand in your pulpit and simply proclaim God's word. Robin, you can miss your love, you and your sweet family, and speak to these folks if you would uh, today. George, you, you and Brooke come up here and stand. Robin, come up here and stand. You and your sweet wife, Ryan. And you want to come and speak to them. Come to my wife, to your left. My wife, come this way. That way we won't have a a big old mess up here, and come and just speak to them, would you? Let's bow our heads for a folks and pray. Loving Father, we recognize your presence in this place. But the real place of presence is in our hearts. You are here because we are here. You have chosen to dwell in the hearts of your people. And so I pray that we will never forget that you live within our hearts. And the world is hungry to see Jesus in us. Thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. Now, as we're the church gathered, in just a moment we'll be the church scattered. I pray that our God talk will match our God walk. And in life's labors and in life's leisures, I pray that we will understand we're departing for the field of mission. And as we do, the mission field awaits. May they see Jesus in us is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.